Hi and welcome to our first ever members only live stream. Now this is a special live stream for those who have joined the members only WhatsApp group and the Facebook group and my Patreon page. So to make this live stream a success you need to participate and I can also already see in the chat we have Ram who's saying hello and Ladybird hello everybody. Dennis is here so hello Dennis and Deslin hello. So we have a few participants already and if you're watching this video as a future public video because I will publish this video for others to see later and you want to participate in the next members only live stream there'll be a link in the description below. But enough of that for now let's get on with this live stream and this is supposed to be like a Q&A &A where you can ask anything to do with musical education and we can maybe help each other I could have my opinions and people in the chat could also make their own comments about some of the questions that come up all right so I'll be referring to the chat quite frequently um, Ram says been waiting for this since a long time okay and to get us started I'm going to use one of the questions that was forwarded to me when I did an initial sort of um, feeler to see if this would be a popular idea and Anna Lee who I can't see in the chat at the moment, so I don't know where you are, Anna Lee, but I'm going to read out your question anyway. Anna Lee wrote, This subject may have been done to death already, but your opinion on how to deal with exam nerves would be welcome. Another area in which I have difficulty is getting myself mentally ready to play my next piece. My exam pieces are so different from each other that in an exam situation, I need to change from one mood or feel to the other rather quickly and I find it difficult. Now you have two questions there but really they're related. The first question was about dealing with nerves okay and the second question was about how to get into the mood of the piece and change that mood especially when the pieces are very different in an exam situation. Now in my opinion Getting rid of exam nerves can be greatly helped by forgetting about the notes and concentrating on the character, the musical aspects of the piece. Okay, so if you just get into the music and start letting the emotions of the music take control of your playing, you should have done enough preparation at that point so you don't have to worry about the technical aspects and the notes. Okay? And I have one student, in fact they are in the chat at the moment, um, in fact it was Ladybird, and I suggested to her, um, that's a pseudonym, <laughs> but I suggested to her before some of her exam pieces that she drew little pictures or maybe found on Google just some images that convey to her what the piece is all about. I think there was a grade two piece of the stowaway. If I can just turn this machine on, that'll be more useful. And it was about someone hiding away in the bottom of a ship. And she found this picture of someone just creeping around and just did a little cutout and put it on the top of her exam pieces. So that as she turned the page and was about to start the piece, she saw this picture and that mood of someone creeping around in the bottom of a ship sort of just came to her. the stowaway from last year's grade two examinations. Okay, now, can you see how those two questions are related? Exam nerves, forget about the notes, start thinking about the character of the piece, and maybe use little pictures. I don't know if anyone has any other ideas, maybe in the chat here, um, how we can just deal with nerves and how we can change moods. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat, but, um, I'm having a little look here and also there is a lot of people asking for, let's have a little look, confusion about 2-4 time, 4-4 four, four time, 3-4 time and 6-8 time. Okay, right, now, one of the other requests for doing this live stream was to do some grade 3 oral training because one of the students, again it is, happens to be Ladybird, is doing a grade 3 exam in the near future. So I thought we could start off by doing maybe some grade three oral tests, okay? And let's have a little look. Um, just 
get rid of that notification. All right, so here is a few little examples of some clapping tests that you get for grade three. Now, what you have to do in the grade three exam is clap the pulse as the examiner is playing a short piece with a louder clap on the strong beats, like that. And then, at the end, they will ask, is it in two time, three time, or four time, okay? I'll come back to your comment later, Dennis, okay? But um, let's just have a little listen to a couple of these pieces here. No, I don't want a metronome, I want to just give a little bit of reverb. Okay, now, try and clap the pulse to yourself while you're listening to this. Obviously, I won't be able to hear you, but then state whether it's in two time, three time, or four time, and we'll discuss it amongst ourselves. because you're clapping along at the same time but how many beats in a bar do you think they were in that particular test okay I will come back to these messages afterwards now Desley is saying in four time the confusion can sometimes be is it in two time or four time because they're very easily confused one with the other two time divides into four time yeah two divides into four in mathematically so Two time. I'm going to play you the same piece as if it were in two time. strong pulse every two beats one two and one two one two and one two now listen to it in four time and the third beat isn't as strong as the first beat and that's the difference between two time and four time distinction between two time and four time. I hope it's helped a little bit. I do have other videos um, on my uh, e-oral trainer playlist that could help with that as well. Now the other confusion someone mentioned is two time and six eight time because six eight is two groups of three. So is it one, two, da, 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 or is it three time because you might think of those quavers, da, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, usually, here's a little trick for you, okay? If you're t ending clapping up really fast, like da, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, it's too quick to be a beat. Those are just subdivisions of a beat, usually the quavers in six, eight time. That doesn't actually come into a, a test until grade seven, I do believe where you have to distinguish 6-8 time. But you could get a 6-8 piece, even a grade three. You might just hear a piece that's got two beats in a bar. So I want you to tell me whether this piece is in 6-8 time or in 2-4 time. Sorry, 6-8 time, yeah, or two beats in a bar or three beats in a bar. Six time, three time, it could be all sorts of things. <laughs> two four time but how many beats are in a bar in that okay would you say that's three beats in a bar or two beats in a bar now someone's going for three 
and it goes one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, now. Remember what I was saying about very fast clapping. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah? Or do you think the beats are more one, two, one, two, one, two, one. I, can't, I can't talk and play at the same time. <laughs> Try again. One, two, one. sounds more like a beat and which sounds more like just quavers within a beat okay so we've got quite a lot of people going for the one two three one two three so three time you're saying I would suggest to you that because it's playing fairly fast those are just parts of a beat yeah and also another little clue you remember what I was saying about the difference between two time and four time there is a stronger first beat to a third beat if it's in four time but if it's in two time it's just be one two one two an equal emphasis now in six eight time the middle of the bar won't be as strong as the beginning of the bar can you hear that first beat is stronger than the second beat weak sorry strong Strong, weak, strong, weak, strong, weak. Okay, if it were in three time, each beat would have equal weight. Okay, so I'm going to suggest to you that that is in six eight time, and that's what it says in the book anyway. <laughs> Okay, so there are two beats in a bar. Now, I'm going to go back a little bit in the chat because we did have a little comment about nerves. And Dennis was saying here, for me, it's not nerves. It's more like I just lose concentration when I know someone is watching. I play at 60% of my solitary practice. No, I play 60% of my solitary practice in front of my teacher. Okay. So, just the thought that someone there is listening to you just helps you, well, not helps you, makes you lose concentration. And I can understand what you're saying. Also, you put pressure on yourself to try and get something right. Okay, now, in particular, I could um, be doing one of these uh, videos for an ABRSM piece. And I've practiced it a few times. Got it. Yeah, that's all right. I can play that. I put a camera on myself, there's no one listening. I put a camera on myself and I start putting myself under pressure. And I make little slips and I think, why is that happening? I didn't do that a minute ago. And there's not even another person in the room, it's just a camera. But when we put ourselves under pressure to get things right, sometimes it can make our concentration go. So you really just need to go back to what I was saying about getting into the music, getting into the character and the style. And remember that the examiner is looking for your musicality. He's looking for you to be able to play a piece conveying the style and the character of the piece, not just getting the right notes. Okay? So, what are you saying there, Dennis? Um, exactly the same for me. I'm assuming you're talking about when you put a camera on you because I noticed, in fact, today exactly, I published a video which Dennis sent me for an appraisal. It was a very good version of Happy Day for Grade 1 Piano. And I'm not sure what your experience was when you put that to camera, but probably you could play it much better before you turn the camera on. And then you put the camera on and you put yourself under pressure and why is this happening to me? Okay, so maybe you could relate to that. Okay, now I don't know if we've got any other particular questions coming up in the chat, but in the time whilst you're writing them down. We can go through a couple of other things that might come up in a grade three oral test because, to be honest, between grades one, two and three, and I know we've got a couple of grade ones here and a couple of grade twos here, threes I mean, um, there is not a lot of difference in the, the tests that you have. All right. Ah, Dennis is just telling me that um, 
the video he sent me was the sixth take. So, um, <laughs> yes, you can relate to my problem. Okay, right, now, another part of the oral tests in grades one, two and three is the singing echoes. Now, I could play you three little phrases and you could sing them back, but I'd never hear that, would I? Not on a live stream. You can't sing back through the chat. But what we could do is something a little bit different. So what I'm going to try and do, and this will help people doing higher grades as well, is to recognise the notes. Because when you get up to the higher grades, you have to sight sing. And if you can hear what the notes are in your head, that means the reverse of that means you can sight sing. OK, so I'm going to play something in a nice simple key of C major. And I'm going to play you a little two bar phrase, short phrase. You could sing it back to yourself if you want to. But I'd like you in the chat to write down the names of the notes that you hear. I'm not sure. Yes, you can see my hand um, and what I'm playing on screen. So what I'm going to do and hmm, I don't think the book, the resolution is clear enough. You could actually read the music. So. We should be able to get away with that. Anyway, I'm going to cover my hand so that you cannot see what I'm playing. So here is a key chord of C major. And I want you to name these notes as I play them. You can sing them back to yourself if you want to. Now, in an exam you would sing that back directly, okay? Right, anything for singing echoes. Now, um, we're just doing that right now, Deslin, okay? So, if you could actually put down what grades you are, I know a couple of people what grades they're on on this uh, live chat, but just mention what grades you're on, and then maybe I can make this live stream that much more relevant to the people that are participating at this moment, okay? So, I'm going to play you that phrase again. You don't get it twice normally in the exam, but here we go. starts on a C, so I'll give you the first one, and then what are the other letters that follow that C? Okay, we have a C at the beginning. What about this first now? I'm going to play you just the first four notes. And you should recognise that as a particular shape in music. C, E, G, C, B, A, G. Very good, Deslin. That is perfect. All right. And another thing that I was doing there, and I don't know if any of you have watched my um, piano geography series that I've been putting out recently, but as I covered my hand, and then played the piece, you get to know the feel of where the notes are on the piano. And the thing that I have noticed, and this is another little topic that I, I keep going on about, all right, and with my own private students as well, um, is that one of the biggest problems for sight reading is that people are always looking at their hands. And I encourage you all to just try and get out of that habit of looking at your hands when you're playing. And that's what the uh, Piano Geography series has been trying to train you to do. Have a look back if you haven't tried them already, or if you have tried them, maybe you could let me know if they've been helpful in the chat here, okay? But just get out of that habit of looking at your hands. Now, let's try another little phrase. We finished on the G, and you sang that back, and then... I'll play it again. So you finished on a G, and then the next phrase was... Who's going to have a stab at what those notes are? There's a little bit of a pause here as we wait for you to write down your answers. Even if you got the first note, just put the first note down and we can just build and work it out together. A, F, D, G, E, D, E, F. Yes. A, F, D, G, E, D, E, F. You've got this, Deslin. Could you let us know what... Um... <laughs> no, you're correct. 
Um, could you let us know what grade you're at? Are you doing sight singing for any, by any chance? Um, like in grades four and above? Because at grades four, five, six, seven and eight, you have to sight sing, not just sing back. Grade six. So yes, you are doing sight singing. Okay, and let's just do one more phrase. Now we've finished on an F. Okay, and then the last phrase. Let's try that again. We've finished on the F. And then the last seven notes. What would those notes be now? I wonder if anyone can get in before Deslin this time. This is a very good skill to try and develop if you're doing sight singing. Just work out what the notes are. If you're just listening to music in the car or in a supermarket or something, and okay, you don't know what key it's in necessarily unless you've got perfect pitch, but just imagine you're in a certain key, maybe C major, just to make it easy. And then, okay, Dennis, G, A, B, C, you got the first four correct, well done. G, A, B, C, E, D, C, Ladybird, well done, okay. And Ladybird's only on grade three that I know, so that is an excellent response. Okay, <laughs> so done that really well. As I was saying, if you're just listening to some incidental music in the shops or in, in the car or something, and just hear a little phrase and try and work out what the notes are and imagine on the stave those notes in your head. Okay? It's a nice little exercise. It'll help your sight ringing, sight ringing, sight singing greatly. Okay. Now, the next one in grade three is recognizing changes. Okay? And in this, the examiner will play a short phrase, maybe about four bars long, and then he'll play it again with a slight change the second time. Now depending on your level, at grade one you just have to say whether the change was near the beginning or the end, but in grade three you have to re recognize it as a rhythmic change or a melodic change. And if you're getting really clever you might be able to say whether the note was higher or lower. So like for example a really good answer would be there was a higher note at the end or a shorter note at the beginning. Okay, so here's a little phrase. You do get a key chord, you do get a count in, so it give you one, two, one, two. And then you get it played with a change. Okay, now what sort of change was it and where was it? And if you could be even more precise, was it higher, lower, longer or shorter? Okay, what about that question there? Just waiting for you to uh, come up with your answers. Right, Dennis, he was saying there's a change at the end. Okay, now that's all you need to do for grade one and you're on grade one, so that's fine. For those who are doing higher grades, can you tell me whether that change was a melodic change or a rhythmic change? And Ladybird, there was a melodic change at the end. Now, in the second piece, can you say whether that note that changed was higher or lower than in the first phrase that I played? I could play it to you one more time. And with the change. And Deslin is going for higher. That is correct. Okay. So that's quite an easy test for grade six, but um, Hopefully those who didn't get to their keyboard in time to type the answer would have got the same answer. And then finally, recognising musical features. Now this question does go through various stages in the grades, okay? So in grade one, you have to talk about just dynamics, loud and soft playing, and articulation, legato, smooth or detached staccato playing. 
Then in grade two, you might talk about changes in tempo, whether it speeds up or slows down. In grade three, they add the uh, idea of whether it is in a major or a minor key. But also, as you go through the grades, you add other things like the style and period, or the texture and the structure, if you're going up for grade six, okay? So, Deslin, you could be thinking about the texture and the structure of the piece, whereas Ladybird, you might be thinking about the tonality, the major or the minor. And then Dennis, you might just want to talk about the dynamics and the articulation, okay? So, this test is a very good test for anyone, all right, doing the... Uh, the ABRSM oral test. So let's have a listen to this. And whatever grade you're on, just talk about any notable features. By the way, if you're doing grade eight, the question is, just discuss any notable features. So you choose what you want to talk about, okay? Have a listen. Now I'm going to leave it up to you. I'm not going to ask a specific question, but can you tell me anything that you noticed? You might talk about the dynamics. You might talk about the articulation. You might talk about the tonality, major or minor. You could talk about the tempo, whether it changes, the texture, the structure, the style, the period. There's all sorts of questions depending on whatever grade you are taking. So, Who's going to be first in with what they noticed about the way I played it? I'll play it one more time to give you time to formulate your answer and type it on a keyboard, because obviously it takes a little bit of time and a little bit of an internet delay sometimes. All right, okay. Now, Dennis, first of all, it was all played legato and the second half was softer. So you've just passed the grade one part of that exam. So you're well prepared for your grade one exam. I think you told me it was coming up in the very near future, maybe the end of this month, beginning of next month, if I remember correctly. So you're well prepared. Now, Des is saying it's in the Romantic era, which it is, yes. Um, could you elaborate on that, Deslin? Because often in the exam they might ask for what musical features tell you that it's part of the Romantic period. Okay, so just have a little think about that and then tell me why you think it's from the Romantic era, which is the correct answer. Okay, Janice is saying it's in a minor key. It sounded melancholic. Now, sorry, there's another thing that I forgot to mention. One of the notable features is talk about the character of the piece. I do believe that's grade four, all right? So, exactly. And the fact that you said it was a melancholy piece is supported by the fact that you said it's in a minor key, okay? So minor keys have a sad mood, don't they? Also, I think the slightly slow tempo would have added to that melancholy character of the piece. Okay, Ram is just um, reinforcing what we said already about starts, forte, and then goes piano. Um, it's a melodic piece played legato. Very good. And Dennis is just telling me his exam's on the 1st of June, so we're all going to wish Dennis good luck there. I want that all in the chat now, all of you. Good luck, Dennis. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and um, Anna Lee, you've joined us. Okay. 
because I don't think you were here at the beginning when I answered your specific question about nerves. Don't go back now, but you can always watch this uh, a repeat of this video in the future. Okay. Um, use of rabata. Now that is one of your reasons, I'm assuming, for why it's from the Romantic era, yes? So that would be a good idea. Um, there was also a few other little things. Okay, Deslin. Lyrical melody, use of rabata, you just repeated that, yes. And the sustain pebble, that's another re thing that is quite typical in the Romantic. I wouldn't call that an exclusive of the Romantic period. You do get some pedal in Mozart, for example, but it's much more heavily used in the Romantic period. And a wider range of dynamics, correct. Well done, Deslin. You've wished um, Dennis good luck. Okay. <laughs> Now, let's get on to the higher grades. What about the structure of the piece? Can you remember it? How the two, three, four, five, six sections are put together. All right. And I think we ought to also um, wish Ladybird good luck because your exam is on the 5th of June, if I remember correctly whilst everyone's waiting for their, uh, getting their answers typed out. Yes, 5th of June, we've confirmed that. What about, uh, I'm going down too many rabbit holes at the same time, we're getting distracted from our question. The structure of the piece. Now, can anyone work out how the sections are put together? How many sections are there? Okay, for example. I think that comes into grade six for you, Deslin. So, um, what would you say there? Just waiting for your. Right, huh? we've just got all these good luck messages going out. Now, I see I distracted you, so you're not concentrating on the question now. But <laughs> this is the Music Online UK community, and we do support each other. And for those who are watching the public um, video after this has finished, there is a very nicely close-knit community for Music Online members where we have a little WhatsApp group and we can support each other and often people will put questions and it's not always me that answers, but other members of the group can join in and put their comments and everything. So it's a lovely little group there. It's like a little little family, if you like of people that have all got one common interest of becoming better musicians in their musical education, all right? So that's something to think about. Now, does anyone have an answer to the structure of the piece? All right. Um, Ram is still confused about the three, four and six, eight, yeah. I would suggest um, that we put that question, because we have covered it already, I don't want to sort of go back, put it in the comments below this video and then I might give you some links to other things you can watch later, okay? All right, um, now, how do we tell the difference between interrupted cadence, imperfect cadence? Okay, interrupted and imperfect. We're not going to get an answer to this, are we? I'm going to play the piece to you one more time, then I'm going to come back to Jonas's question. And I want you to tell me how many main sections are in this piece. OK, let's get that question finished before we go down another rabbit hole. sections did you hear? It's quite an easy question but I think we're all just distracted by other things at the moment. Right now that's good. Dennis is saying AA. All right. 
there were two sections. And very often we think two sections, oh, that's binary form, A, B. But if you listen carefully, the two sections are exactly the same. The tune is the same, the chords are the same. Okay, there was one extra bass note in the first section. I went... And the final one finished and stopped. Okay, but apart from that extra bass note at the end, they were identical. So well done, Dennis, for calling it AA. Okay, right. Now, we're talking a little bit about cadences. Perfect, interrupted, and what have we got here? So what grade are you doing? Because if you're doing grade eight, you also need plagal cadences, okay? But, um, all right, a perfect cadence will sound finished. So at the end of this piece, we've arrived at the home key. And an imperfect cadence sounds like it needs to go on. It doesn't sound finished yet. So have we got one in this piece? on the dominant chord as we call it and that was the cadence that sounds unfinished like it needs to go on all right and that's an imperfect cadence interrupted cadence sounds like it was about to finish and then takes a sudden twist and usually the tonality changes so in this piece uh, let's see if we're going to invent one goes into a major key suddenly. All right, it sounds like it's going to finish and then changes direction and goes into a different tonality. That's the interrupted cadence. All right, and then the plagal cadence is what I call the amen cadence. Now, you've got your key note. Um, now, in chord four, which is the chord before the end in a plagal cadence, also have that key note. You can hear the tonic in both the last two chords, plagal, four to one. And it calls the Amen cadence because a lot of people would go, Amen, like that. Okay? So, um, pitch does help identifying the cadence, but Usually the most important part to listen to, if you're trying to work out the notes for the cadence, is the bass part. That gives you the biggest clue of what the cadence are. Now, on my e oral trainer, I've got lots of videos about recognising cadences, and we could go through those at another time. All right, but um, hopefully that's helped a little bit. Um, we're going to probably call it a day in a few minutes, but I want to really thank you all for making this uh, live stream a success. There have been about a, a half a dozen, maybe a dozen of you participating at different times. And this is something I just want to grow. So I'm going to be doing this again in a month's time, approximately. And then maybe if you have your questions, look out for the notifications in WhatsApp or in the Facebook group or on Patreon. And you can put your questions to me there. And then if we've got a consensus of what people are wanting to work at, we could concentrate on a different area next time. All right, so thank you again for um, your participation. I will go through, if you give me what grades you are, maybe some higher grades for next time. All right, uh, just quickly reading your comments there. Plagal 2, does pitch also help identify case? We've done that. What if the chord is inverted? Yeah. Now there are various combinations, and if you have like chord one, one B, one C, then it will be a different bass note. But by identifying the bass note, you're limiting the possibilities. Okay, and there are certain combinations. It's a little bit of theory knowledge. It's not just a question of how can I say, just listening for an oral test. But you've got to use your theory knowledge alongside it. And if you know what combinations you can have in 
a cadence. First of all, you identify the cadence. Then you know already what chord should make that cadence. And then you can identify the inversion by just listening to the bass part. All right? And that's the way that the grade eight oral tests work, actually. First of all, they just say, what is this cadence? And you could do that just by the sound of it. Then you have to sometimes sing the lower part of the last phrase. And if you can hear that lower part, it'll tell you what the inversions are. All right. I will go through some examples of higher grades, maybe on the next live stream. But um, it's been very useful, I think, for those who have participated. And hope to see you all again. Spread the word. I'm going to spread the word because this video will be published for everyone to see and then they'll be jealous that they weren't a member. But then they can always join by clicking the link that I'm going to put in the description below. All right. And I'll see you all next time.